to everyone. So today we are going to discuss about economics and how it can be meant for well-being of all. So we are all acquainted with the word economics and it is a part of academics. We went through workshops, we are attending the regular meetings, many of us are also attending the morning sessions and through that we are able to explore deeper and further about the reality, the reality of the human being, the reality of the existence and the reality of human conduct. Now, we started with introducing one course on human values. And gradually, we have to move towards making the whole education system value based. And when you go to do that, we'll have to give our inputs for all the courses which are being taught to the students right from primary to the higher education. And in particular, we have to talk about humanities. The various courses which are taught in humanities like psychology, sociology, economics. And that's how we plan to have this keynote lecture today. So earlier we saw how we can have a solution centric approach towards all the problems in the society. And when we start with education, because you could see that whenever you go for solution centric approach, you have to work on the right understanding of people. We have to ensure the right feeling in the people. And for that, we have to enter into education and we have to make the whole education system value based. So how can we have the economics which is meant for well-being of all and whether the economics that is being taught today, being studied today, is it really able to achieve this, the well-being of all? Or there are some uh, certain fallacies, certain inadequacies, certain assumptions which need to be looked into in the present day economics and they have to be evaluated properly and then also transformed. So we'll try to have an overview of this whole thing and we'd like to interact as much as possible in the limited time. So I think I can go up to 5.15. So there's a lot of time we can freely interact. And do let me know if anything is not clear in the session. So economics is the science of fulfillment of the need for physical facilities of human being, ensuring the universal human order, generation after generation. So we have need for physical facilities, isn't it? All of us are able to see this. Now, we are, whether this need is meant for the body or the self is something that we are exploring, but we are able to see the need for physical facilities. How much we require, what physical facilities we require, that is something that we are exploring into. And we could see that as we enter the process of self-exploration, we start identifying our needs in a much clearer way. The way the sharing was being done, we could see how we have been able to transform our life, how we have been able to identify our needs <clears throat> correctly. So economics is basically the science of fulfillment of the physical needs. And it has to be in such a way that it ensures the fulfillment of human order. And that also not only for one generation, but generation after generation. So it is meant for the well-being of all. Now, when you go to ensure this, then only we can say that the economics is humane. So we can call it human economics. So the economics which is meant for the well-being of all is human economics. Otherwise, it is not is either a human or inhuman, isn't it? Are you able to see this? You can respond in the chat box. Economics is not meant for the well-being of all. We cannot call it human. Do you agree or not? So we'll explore into it. What will be the various aspects? What all has to be taken into account when we go to talk about human economics? So we have to understand the needs because this is basically the science of fulfillment of needs. So we have to have the clarity about the needs. Now we can see that human being is coexistence of self and body. These are two distinct realities. Their needs are different, the activities are different, the responses are different. So we as human beings are coexistence of one conscious entity, the self, and one material entity, the body. The more clarity we have about the existence of the self and the body separately, we are able to articulate our needs of physical facility in a much better way. So you can see that as a self, I want to be happy. I want to be happy every moment. And it is something qualitative as a feeling. 
we can further see that this need is fulfilled through right understanding and right feeling isn't it but when i look at my body i can see that the need is in terms of physical facilities like food clothes shelter and each of these needs is temporary in time and also required in a limited quantity it is not limitless isn't it further we can see that this is fulfilled through physiochemical things so the needs are different their program for fulfillment is different the more clearly we are able to see this the more clearly we are able to articulate the need for physical facilities for myself for my family for the society around for the nation otherwise what happens which is something depicted on the right hand side so once i assume that i am the body isn't it the very moment i start expecting happiness out of physical facilities now the need for happiness is continuous like feelings of respect trust this is there in continuity but whatever physical facilities i accumulate i consume i exchange they are all going to be limited now how to ensure the continuity of happiness it remains unclear so what we generally try to do we go for accumulation and consumption of physical facilities in an unlimited manner so to ensure the continuity of happiness or let's say to extend the time interval of my happiness which i am trying to derive from physical facilities i try to add to the limit of physical facilities this is something which is happening phenomenally if you look at the current economics the current society the way our markets are working the way our economy is moving you can see this kind of dichotomy there for the sake of happiness we are trying to indulge in terms of physical facilities we are trying to accumulate and consume physical facilities without identifying any limit to it and thus it leads to deprivation in spite of the fact that we are producing more and more we are consuming more and more still the sense of deprivation remains can you see this now if you see just something which is doing the rounds these days the news is coming that us is on the verge of uh, economic failure and the debt there there is a debt crisis there the debt there is 31.4 trillion dollars it is something that came uh, this figure came just 3 or 4 days back 31.4 trillion dollars the population of us is 33.19 something crores you know, and 1 trillion dollar is 1 lakh uh, dollar 1 lakh crore dollar so you can see that the debt is approximately 1 lakh dollars per person in the us so on one hand we are producing so much but on the other hand we are consuming or we are trying to consume more than what we are producing and that's why we have run into a debt so in spite of the fact that we are producing so much we have done so much of technological advancement our industries has have grown our technologies have grown our supply chain management system has grown still the deprivation continues and once you have the feeling of deprivation this feeling that i don't have enough you make more and more effort for physical facility if not by the right means then maybe by the wrong means by any means you try to accumulate and indulge more and more assuming it to be unlimited and then we are caught in this loop and this becomes a kind of vicious cycle <clears throat> we have to really explore and verify see on the surface we are able to see how the nations are running into a debt crisis here on the surface we are able to see how the deprivation is visible in the society but at the root you can see that the basic assumption that i am the body or human being is merely the body is governing this kind of lifestyle are you able to see this you can respond in the chat box if any question is there you can raise your hand and ask now this basic fallacy the basic assumption here is that human being is the body and what is happening now if you look at the courses in economics what we are doing we are teaching to our students that wants are unlimited at the same time we are telling that resources are limited now if you try to feed our children in this manner that wants are unlimited isn't it 
and in hindi many times we say that avashyakta anant hai in english at least we are saying wants are unlimited maybe in some books it is also mentioned that needs are unlimited but anyway once we are not able to get clarity about our wants and the basic want being for continuity of happiness then we are trying to fulfill the want for happiness through physical facilities and then it appears as if it is unlimited something which we can see on the right hand side here and we can also see the limitedness of the resources isn't it now this is a very wrong assumption which we are feeding to the students in our courses of economics in various other courses also but at least the economics has to have this clarity that wants are not unlimited there are two distinct kinds of wants one is for the self and the other is for the body and for the body whatever i require is limited this clarity is never given in the course on economics and then we keep on teaching multiple theories multiple principles and then we do mathematical calculations so many things we do but you can just see that at the core this basic assumption is not challenged and that's how whatever effort we make in spite of the so called development that we are doing today we are into debt crisis and this is not only with one nation us this is happening with most of the countries now most of the countries are in this debt crisis just recently sri lanka also you know became bankrupt industrialists are becoming bankrupt our young uh, uh, students who are going to a job when we look at their lifestyle and then you interact after they have become alumni some of them report like uh, getting into this kind of situation taking so much of loan and then trying to fulfill their desires for happiness through physical facilities but never feeling fulfilled and then running into a debt crisis so this kind of scenario is common and now who is responsible for this so ultimately we have to hold the responsibility in terms of education the education has to be responsible in the education we are giving the wrong assumption to our children and that's how they are getting misled isn't it um bhaiya namaste ha namaste bhaiya you know now in technical education in, in most of the courses uh, students are being encouraged about you know uh, to have startups you know using the technology how they can be an entrepreneur or like that so uh, how do we look you know these things in the academics uh, as you know related to economics and all can you please put some light yes that uh, many studies are now coming up about the startups we can see the youtube also many investigations are there about the success and failure of startups and as it is appearing now that the students do not have clarity about their needs they do not have clarity about the relationship so they try to become rich in a very short span of time in fact there are many motivational talks also being advertised on youtube and other social media how to become a billionaire Uh, i could see that one common advertisement that keeps on cropping up is uh, he starts with a question that are you a billionaire if not why so what are you doing so this kind of yeah, motivation yeah. is being given you know, <laughs> to the students so once they go into some business they try to amass as much of wealth as possible in a very limited time and in that process they also violate the relationship either with their partners with whom they have started the business or with the customers or with the dealers this is one problem the second problem is that once they are successful to a particular extent then they extend their imagination and then try to extend their business beyond their competence and take too much of loan and they enter into a debt crisis i will not name any startup but if you just study the uh, startup that uh, developed in the last 10 years then you can have statistical analysis also of how many startups got successful and how many failed and what have been the reasons for their failure you know they have run into a debt of thousands of crores even though they were very successful and there are good prospects also so what is happening again the uh, uh, people are not clear our students are not clear about their needs correctly they are not able to develop their team rightly and place of identification of need there is a greed that can be seen there is a kind of madness for profit maximization and that's how this kind of failure is quite visible see so whenever we are having some program on startups or incubation center or entrepreneurship we have to have this kind of session also so that they don't run into a business of failure they don't uh, fail like this 
once they have the clarity about the need for physical facilities once they have the clarity about the relationship then only they can work in a sustainable manner isn't it and there's so much of competition among them that they are just trying to get above others by hook or by crook this is also there by taking undue advantage of the policies or by finding loopholes in the system and the policies they are trying to amass wealth and then they are uh, failing in the business making false promises and all those things so that has to be really looked into in fact we can have some session on startups also maybe sometime next and then we can make an analysis of how startups can be successful and how they are failing today ji ji bhai thank you very much and i just want to add one line uh, you know when we were students you know, one of my friend had started the startup and you know they have undergone different kinds of ups and downs and now uh, they are in a you know, very good position they are having good turnover but when i look at them their personal life you know, like uh, getting up in the morning or sleeping in the night and uh, regarding family life there are there lots lots of struggle so i was wondering what is that that is very 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 true ji thank you ji bhaiya now as we are discussing about the need for the self and need of the body so once you go to understand the need of the self we are able to see that the need of the self is contribute of happiness and when you study when you explore into the program of its fulfillment then you can see that happiness is my innate nature it is not an external influence now this clarity is also not there isn't it we just observe how the students celebrate once they get a job they will celebrate they have got placed and then they will go for merry making no eating food which is not good for health taking drinks many times hard drinks right and doing so many things trying to uh, get sensual pleasure in so many ways so the students are not clear that happiness is their innate nature and we are also not talking about this in most of the courses the economics has to talk about this that unless you are able to see that happiness is your innate nature and not an external influence so to get this external influence more and more ultimately you are going to indulge and the wrong assumption here is that excitement is equated to be happiness but we need to see that happiness is ensured by right understanding right feeling which is something innate to me which is going to be ensured in me now if you look at the possible sources of happiness there are three possible sources of happiness so one source is sensation which we get from physical facilities through the body through our five sense organs sound touch form taste smell and we can see that whatever we derive in terms of sensation from these sources is temporary it cannot be continuous the sound or the music that i like i cannot listen to that music in continuity that touch that i appreciate i cannot have in continuity the form that uh, catches my attention i cannot look at that form in continuity the taste that i get from the tongue there can be no continuity in it at the very so after some time i lose that taste and similarly with the smell so it is temporary there is no continuity and there is also dependence on the body and the other so the other here is physical facility so there is dependence on the body isn't it and some other physical facility here to get that favorable sensation there is no completion point also we are not able to see that yes now this is complete okay and this is going to continue no and hence continuity also not possible so if you observe whatever you get from physical facility you can see that there is a sequence that applies there it is tasty and necessary to begin with but very soon when the need gets fulfilled it is unnecessary while the taste continues and if you still keep on consuming it becomes tasteless something that you can see here written on the bottom in this black font it becomes tasteless and after some time it becomes intolerable so for any physical facility this sequence applies a good thing is that in economics that we are teaching today we are partly talking about this sequence about the physical facility there is a law called law of diminishing marginal utility or law of diminishing return is taught in the economics is there anybody here who is a faculty of economics in this session you can mention yourself here if you have been teaching economics in college or in school 
but we must have gone through courses in economics you know, in our secondary or higher secondary education that humanities also includes economics and it is taught in the bachelor level courses also ji ganesh chattopadhyay ji i think you are there yeah namaste kumar bhaiya ji namaste ha ha i'm the economics is actually my interesting subject i am from commerce background but i am not the master in economics so i am uh, master in accountancy or finance whatever but okay uh, i have certain basic knowledge about that economics also so on that basis uh, what is the question uh, another time no, no, i was just asking if anybody here has been a faculty of economics ha fine i got your response that you are a faculty of commerce ha yeah, but faculty of commerce but i do understand i, I teach also economics sometimes also ji uh, ji Hey, and, and uh, earlier also I shared my views like that we have been taught even and we learned that uh, that uh, as per say Robin's definition of economics that uh, it is that there is always interaction between uh, the limited resources and say unlimited ones. Okay, but we have we have learned also that it is ultimately after joining this course also it has come very clear to me also. Uh, earlier i said that it is actually um, that there is a huge resources because there is a, say four order as you say physical order then bio order then goes to animal order and the, the top is the uh, human human order so there is no dart of resources actually it is the proper distribution uh, that, that is the problem and proper distribution that comes from the right understanding that right understanding is not there so that's the problem because all of us want to acquire as much as possible without knowing that what would be its ultimate the result and whether i will be happy by acquiring all these resources or not so that clarity that clear understanding and then uh, the feelings relationship peace is this is not there that's why uh, because there is a lot of waste of the resources so many places and somebody is the uh, deprived of that things so if there is a clear cut policy and the good human being uh, having the right understanding and feelings so i i think lot of problems will be uh, solved in the basic level also we need not to go ahead so that definition then we see that goes actually uh, wrong uh, and as you are talking about about the uh, the uh, the law of diminishing return yes that that happens mostly in the agriculture sector and the as a primary sector uh, that even it has come in the industry etc so we used to say as per the economics theory that uh, if we can improve in our the tertiary sector the third sector that is based on the services because there is no say we can say sky is the limit we do not know where is the limit because we can by the way of as tara prasanna bhai was saying like that the entrepreneur etc so there is no actually limit of that what where we can reach we do not know what is not possible today after few years uh, that is possible now very many times you also mentioned that uh, the day will come that we will go to even the mongol groho all of that or the uh, the going to the uh, yeah uh, that moon is no it is also getting possible those who are having the a huge money no, no, what is the conclusion bhaiya what is the conclusion yeah. that you want to convey ha so that means conclusion is that uh, what we are getting after joining this course especially to understand there is you no know, dart of the resources it is the clear policies good human being with right understanding uh, this is this is required uh, if it is possible under say uh, from we say the from human uh, animal consciousness to human consciousness if that transformation is taking uh, takes place i think it would take place may take time may take time but day is uh, day is coming i think that we can reach this there so there cannot be uh, that type of problem and there would be clarity and there is something to be changed in our the education system and i think that, that is taking place though it may take time but i think it will come up that's uh, bhaiya i think there is only thing problem is that the, Uh, right right un understanding ji ji and the relationship so ji, right ji. understanding if the relationship will come that we know and there will be participation sharing everything will take possible nice nice bhaiya 
so one source of happiness that people are looking for is sensation through physical facilities which they are able to derive from the body and we can see that there is temporariness here the dependence on the body and other units here there is no completion point the continuity is also not possible and we can see the sequence applying so what ganesh ji is also mentioning and i was mentioning that uh, in economics we are talking about the law of diminishing return the law of diminishing marginal utility but we are not able to talk about uh any law where something can sustain in continuity so what could be the source of happiness in continuity this is something that we are not addressing and that's how even though we are able to see that this diminishing return or diminishing marginal utility is going to apply for the physical facility then how come my needs are going to be fulfilled and that's how we keep on changing physical facilities from time to time for the sake of happiness similarly another source of happiness that people are looking into is the right feeling from the other so trying to borrow the right feeling from the other by catching their attention okay, or by <clears throat> getting appreciation in the society and around but there also we can see that there is temporariness here anybody cannot appreciate you forever or in continuity one cannot just go on appreciating you in continuity or one may not pay attention to you in continuity so it is temporary they depends on the other and that's how there is indefiniteness here because the other may or may not pay attention to you there is no completion point here and continuity is also not possible so essentially what we are terming as happiness today is a source of temporary excitement in fact this has become a common notion also that ultimately what you can achieve in life is excitement which is temporary and you can only add to more and more excitement and that's how you can see in the market so many businesses are also flourishing which are uh, enticing people for temporary excitement and they are in the short run people are able to make good amount of wealth but in the long run the society suffers their health suffers the family suffers isn't it ji but when you look at the source of continuous happiness we can see that this is right understanding and right feeling so right understanding essentially means understanding the harmony at all levels of our being right from human being to the entire existence human being family society nature existence and this understanding is ensured by awakening to the higher activities of the self so there is a definite completion point here the completion point is the activity of realization in the self we'll talk about this briefly and then you can see that continuity is ensured of happiness in the self and then i am self organized i am no longer dependent on something outside happiness becomes my innate nature is not to be derived from outside anymore on the basis of this right understanding i am able to contemplate on the right feeling like trust respect affection fear guidance uh, ji bhaiya i have got two queries bhaiya so yes. when we refer as no completion point we mean to say enslavement am i correct bhaiya no completion point means that in other words there is no continuity there so you cannot say that yes this is final because you still crave for more and more that's so how that, there is no completion point so that means it is enslavement yeah it is it is enslavement for sure sure okay ji bhai bhai then the next query is in right understanding we have mentioned continuity is ensured then possible in right feeling we have said only continuity is possible so whether there is any significant difference between these two bhai ensured and possible and only possible here in right feeling yeah so unless right understanding is there right feeling is not ensured in continuity so the basis of continuity of right feeling is right understanding so that's why you have mentioned that continuity is ensured through self exploration but the possibility always exists so the possibility is there it gets ensured through mm -hmm. right understanding and then uh, once it is ensured at the level of understanding then the feeling continues so you can still write here continuity is ensured but the only significance is that it is ensured only when the right understanding is ensured so the mm -hmm. right feeling in continuity is there when right understanding is ensured ji bhaiya got the point bhaiya thank you so much sir nice didi there is one question bhaiya when i am not getting promotion though i am eligible shall i continue to fight for it now again here we have to see like is my promotion related to fulfillment of human goal or not so 
I have to look into the purpose of this promotion. So, if by getting promotion, I am able to participate in the larger order, well and good. If my promotion is uh, hindered and people who are not having the right understanding start dominating over me, so then also I have to take care of this because I have to see how the right understanding can be ensured in every human being. So any inhuman conduct has to be taken care of, has to be contained. But if I'm trying to get promotion for this excitement, when I'm having this tag over my name, then people will pay respect to me. They will pay attention to me. They will bow before me. They will obey my orders or I will get some favorable sensation sitting in that laundry chair or in that air conditioned room. Then I'm looking for temporary excitement. Yeah, so when you say I deserve it, but then again, you have to see what is the purpose of that. See, everyone deserves respect, isn't it? Everyone deserves right understanding, right feeling. So you can work for it, but at the same time, the need has to be clear. So that's how, you no, know, like the post, if you look at any post in an organization, the purpose of the post is to participate in the larger order. So the higher the post, the larger is the order. So if I have the competence to participate in that large order, then that post is valuable to me. Otherwise, it may also become a punishment to you. Maybe one does not have the competence to fulfill relationship with thousand people at a time. And you are given a post where thousand people are working under you. Then you are going to misuse that post. And that will cause unhappiness in you as well as in the other. So first of all, I have to evaluate when I say I deserve it. I have to evaluate whether I am having that competence to ensure justice with these many people and where I'm having this competence to ensure orderliness to that level. That is also something to be looked into because the criteria is something that is laid down by the government on the basis of certain norms, which could be based on preconditioning, isn't it? So that's what I mentioned. So first of all, you have to look into a purpose. I also have to look into the feeling of others, those who are hindering my promotion. What is their feeling? Whether they are having the right understanding or not. It may be the case that I am lacking right understanding. That's how people are not allowing me. It could be the case that I am having the right understanding and others are not having right understanding. And that's how it is being hindered. And at the same time, I have to look into my feeling of responsibility towards others. So all those things have to be taken care of. In the Shekharji. Nice. So the source of continuous happiness is right understanding <clears throat> and right feeling. Yeah, excuse me. One more hand raised, Bhaiya. Uh, namaste, Bhaiya. Namaste to all. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so, Bhaiya, actually, uh, like my, uh, as you said, that law of diminishing marginal utility, that after a certain time, uh, whatever we uh, like get, and uh, so that the demand for, I mean, utility for that goes on diminishing. That's right. But at the same time, what my observations go is when I, uh, when we talk to students about it, about, uh, as you said, that is, we're discussing about startups, as we're discussing that, you know, uh, money making and uh, all those. So the only objective, whenever it is asked, instantly they say that I want to make a lot of money. So what I feel is the, uh, you know, uh, whatever they have been taught as well in the house, that is, you have to get a good job firstly. You have to get this much amount of money for a healthy living and beyond that there is nothing and if they are not getting the jobs they are uh, you know a lot of things uh, the environment is more responsible rather than their own minds certainly so, so we are, as educators are responsible we as parents are responsible and the whole environment is also responsible but the responsibility again lies with the students also if they start exploring by themselves even though the conducive atmosphere is not there but they start exploring by themselves, they can come up with a resolution. Otherwise, they will get taken uh, away by such kinds of conditionings. So in the class also, we can see that there is a certain set of students who are able to pay attention to courses on values. And they, a set of students who are not able to pay attention. So even if the conditions are conducive, but based on their own sanskar, some are paying attention, some are not paying attention. That is also there. Right. So this is how actually this is, uh, you know, how do we uh, channelize their minds? Uh, yes, uh, indeed, it's a responsibility of the facilitators, responsibility of the environment society. That's all well said. 
but at the same time uh, don't you think that you know when they are uh, totally trained uh, right from the beginning uh, that is you know ultimate aim is getting a good job by into or uh, by getting into any of the good uh, you know colleges or whatever you say uh, courses or sometimes they also tell me that uh, ma'am bill gates never studied uh, he never was much interested in studies so though i tell them that no the how many percentage you find out that uh, they are into such things but nevertheless I, uh, somehow i'm uh, like you know this mindset of earning more money is so much in, uh, like inbuilt in them that it is very difficult even on their though they understand it at that moment again when they are uh, you know when they are having a discussion they all go for that no we want a lot of money yeah, so, that so they are highly for... preconditioned they are highly yeah. preconditioned so That's we right. have to we have to help them explore the source of continuity of happiness so if you see the slide in front so this clarity has to be ensured through education it's essentially happiness is the need of the self and that is my innate nature and this is fulfilled by developing the higher activities awakening to the higher activities contemplation understanding and realization then only the happiness can continue otherwise they are you know uh, misguided through various sources of information like the example that we are giving becoming a bill gates now is this the goal of life or the goal of life is to attain the state of realization so that the continuity of happiness is ensured now this is never clear in education right now the goal of life is it to work for undivided society and universal human order or to become a billionaire in the society this is not clear so students are not clear about happiness though they are suffering though they are not able to see their program is going to take them to the state of happiness and continuity still they are not left with any choice because that self exploration is not getting ensured that is something that we have to work upon absolutely very well said uh, yeah because that's very true and uh, really they are in a very pitiable condition when you see because they are struggling uh, you know uh, like uh, how to get out of it and sometimes again getting entrapped into it so thank yeah, you so much yeah. yeah nice nice didi in fact during the induction program we ask certain questions to the students that how many of you want to become billionaire almost every student will raise hand uh -huh, absolutely when you ask the students how many of you want to become happy in continuity then again every student will raise hand and then you ask how many of you feel that by becoming a billionaire you will be happy in continuity no one raises hand ha uh, they are able to explore you know even talking about these icons they are sure that they are not happy in continuity if you look into their lives of these icons either they are business tycoons or politicians or you know scientists or whatever actors actresses the students are able to make out that they are not happy in continuity but they also have a doubt whether happiness can ever be ensured in continuity so that confidence that assurance has to be given to the students that yes this is possible and that that is possible by awakening to the higher activities of the self it is not possible by amassing wealth or uh Uh, accumulation of physical facilities without ever being clear of the limit of the need for that so this is not possible it is possible only through awakening of the higher activities this is something that has to be clarified to the students mm, absolutely bhaiya and a little digression uh, from this that is you know uh, recently i had been to flu for a talk and so i met professor krishna mohan he is working on mental health so he was also talking on all this so i think sooner or later i i told him about this uh, that the aict is conducting such programs so sooner yeah. or later i will involve him and uh, so there's a lot of things uh, you know uh, quite relatable to what uh, we are doing in uhv and what he is working and he's a uh, uh, like he's uh, placed in us though but he's working on lot of mental health conditions and uh, a uh, lot of things like uh, something related to value education so sooner or later i will uh, involve him into all this as well so he'll be a good input to us nice nice didi in fact very <laughs> recently ugc also published the news that they are bothered about the mental health of the students and they are going to develop centers where students can get cured so this has become a kind of phenomenal problem today the students yes, are absolutely. as rajul bia was also mentioning so many are committing suicide they are running into psychological disorders and that is how like we have totally uh, confused the students true very true they are very not clear true. about the basic aspiration yes nice very nice didi thank you bhaiya thank you namaste namaste so we have to see that 
yeah there is a question distinguishing between state activity and dynamic activity so this i will not do here in fact we have been discussing in detail about the activities of the self in the morning session as well as in uhv2 or uhv3 so that is not the uh, core content of this session so i will not explain each and every word here because that will take us some in some other direction but the point is that as a human being through our courses in academics we have to be clear about our role our program so on one hand i have to work for realization within on the other hand i have to work for universal human order leading to human tradition this clarity has to be there otherwise whatever we talk in terms of economics will be confusing will be again misleading to the students we have to place our economics here which is the science of fulfillment of need for physical facility so that has to be based on right understanding right feeling it cannot be without right understanding right feeling isn't it so the right understanding guides the science and that's how we have to be uh, clear about the science of fulfillment of needs of the human being now next thing something that we were discussing also economics has to ensure the right understanding of feeling of prosperity so prosperity is the feeling of having or producing more than required physical facilities and we have to discuss the purpose of physical facility in economics so it is only meant for three purposes nurturing the body protecting the body and right digestion of the body this is something that we never talk about in economics today isn't it we are never able to discuss or explore what would be the purpose of any physical facility so the wrong assumption that is being laid down here is that the wants are unlimited resources are limited and a natural conclusion is that one is bound to be deprived so whatever you study whatever you do in your life ultimately you are bound to be deprived because your wants are unlimited and resources are limited so there is no qualitative shift taking place there is no qualitative difference between an uneducated person and an educated person between a person who has not gone through any course of economics and a person who has gone through course of economics there is no qualitative shift because the common denominator is that both are unhappy and deprived so a person who has studied a lot about physical facility you know and they have he has or she has learned techniques of producing and consuming physical facility so one can only possess more and more physical facility but still feel unhappy and deprived the person who has not gone through this kind of program will be lacking physical facility and still uh, and again being unhappy and deprived so the common factor remains that's how we have to be really serious about the courses that we are offering in education one of them being economics this kind of fallacious uh, notion that wants are unlimited and resources are limited is going to make them feel deprived throughout life and then one once one feels deprived he is going to exploit the other human being he is going to exploit the rest of nature so in family spouses might be uh, exploiting each other for physical facilities so many crimes might be taking place because of that then people are exploiting the other human beings in the society and then people are exploiting the rest of nature like animals and birds and plants isn't it because the common factor remains one is feeling unhappy and deprived you can just see the wealthy nations how they are destroying the nature the forest in the amazon basin is still continuing the forests are being deforested there is uh, there are wars taking place for uh, ownership of uh, resources in the earth so the common factor remains here now our, our basic aspiration is that we want to have physical facility but at the same time we want to be happy and prosperous this is something that we have to be really serious about isn't it yeah there is one question by archana singhar ji i will come to that then there has to be clarity about the human goal and its fulfillment through five dimensions of society so living in a society we are not enemies of each other we are not challenges to each other we are not struggling to survive in fact i can see uh, because where i live i can see many people here working in corporate world <clears throat> and i can see that they are still struggling for survival even though they have a lot of wealth they have costly vehicles costly houses they uh, use costly gadgets but they are still struggling for survival every day when you meet them they will talk about the challenges that they are facing in the job okay without ever being clear how much they have to accumulate and that's how they are uh, they feel exploited at the same time they are not able to come out of that vicious cycle also so 
there is a wrong assumption about gold at different levels and this is something that we can see here assumption that money is everything so i have to accumulate by any means and for that i have to dominate i have to exploit society living in fear i have to create fear for others and i have to master the nature i have to explore the nature and then we can see obsession for consumption profit sensual pleasure all this taking place so we are not able to see that living in a society we have a common goal which can be human <clears throat> and that's how we are struggling for survival in place of ensuring right to standing right feeling every individual we are uh, pumping this kind of assumption in the children that money is everything nobody is trustworthy success in life means how much you have amassed wealth how much you have uh, accumulated things like this in place of prosperity we are again working for accumulation and there is so much of fear and to counter fear we are making more and more weapons uh, amount of wealth that we are misusing today like in our country also i think 13% of the gdp is going into uh, the defense equipments and programs and it could be even much more for other nations so if that is rightly utilized for education and health the result would be much more beneficial to the society and similarly we are destroying and exploiting the nature so these are five dimensions which we have talked about in the last one and a half years in the monthly keynote lectures we have been talking about various dimensions and we can see that education is the foundational system here so there is no clarity about the human goal we assume that the goals will be conflicting in fact in a workshop also even though we explain the meaning of happiness the meaning of prosperity and then again after 3 days 4 days you ask the participants that do you see that the happiness is the same for all rarely anybody agrees to this because we again assume that happiness is going to be different for different people now if happiness is going to be different for different people how can we mutually happy ever living together we cannot be how can we ever have a common goal we cannot have we always be struggling for happiness with each other so my happiness becomes your unhappiness your happiness becomes my unhappiness and so on so this clarity is also required in course on economics isn't it then again you can see that presently there is no uh, acceptance of labor today we have automated the systems we are even using iot we are using machine learning deep learning you know so many things at the same time we need to have the acceptance of labor if you see to ensure my health physical labor is required if i keep on sitting in my chair throughout the day and go to sleep in my bed at night my health is not going to be ensured in fact nowadays uh, the health insurance companies are coming with apps where they count the number of steps that you are walking every day so they accept that you have to walk at least for 7500 steps every day and you have to gain 30 heart points and there is one google app also that says this so the physical labor is required to get heart points you have to do some physical labor isn't it or at least you do some exercises so if we accept that yes physical labor is a need of mine and it is going to ensure health and it is something respectable it is not to be looked down upon this kind of mindset is not being ensured and that's how the target of education has become that i have to make others work for me i do not have to do physical labor myself so in the cities we can see so many gyms are opening up the youth are going to the gyms but they will not like to walk on foot they will not like to cycle they will not like to work in the uh, uh, work in their homes do their household chores even if you have to produce physical facility labor is required on the rest of nature either you will labor or somebody else will labor so what is happening today in the name of education this kind of wrong assumption is being fed to the children somehow either we are saying it directly or they are analyzing it in this manner yeah that the target is to get maximum pay and if possible without labor and that's how we can see that our educated so called educated children are coming up with tricks they are coming up with uh, ideas and uh, ideas and techniques where they can cheat people where they can make make money without any labor isn't it so the target has become like this that i should not be working in fact we are conducting one 
session with the alumni in a certain institution and we asked the student that what is your expectation from <clears throat> placement so one student categorically raised hand and said that my job my target is to have three things one like from the job that i'm getting one job satisfaction second maximum pay and third if possible no work now uh, this has become a kind of notion prevalent in the students okay, that i should amass as much as wealth as possible without doing physical labor by tricking people by finding loopholes in the government policies by finding loopholes in the systems by finding loopholes in the technology isn't it now a message keeps on coming from banks and other uh, payment options payment apps that are there that please do not share your otp with anybody do not do this now, who are those people who are uh, trying to make money out of these tricky ideas they are the so called educated youth isn't it because we have never been able to teach them that your target is to ensure continuity of happiness and not maximum pay and labor is a need of yours the feeling of self regulation very naturally i feel like working on the rest of nature i feel like toiling in the you know, sun because that is going to ensure my health so work is basically the labor a human being does on the rest of nature and production is a natural outcome of it so we want to produce but we are shy of doing human labor isn't it today then it cannot be the case that every human being produces everything for oneself so we have to exchange now there could be three modes of exchange and so the exchange has essentially to be for mutual fulfillment and is not for obsession of profit presently what is ruling the mindset is obsession of profit so there are three possibilities of economics here one is the take and take economics that we feel like taking as much as possible from the other the other also feels like taking as much as possible from me and then what we are doing we are struggling in our exchange and that is to exploitation deprivation even wars at times you know, people are doubting each other's intention people uh, whenever somebody interacts with anybody then there is a doubt that this person must be or might be trying to trick me some way or the other i have to be careful about the other person so that ruling economics today is take and take economics there is another possibility of take and give economics so i feel like taking as much as possible and you feel like giving to me as much as possible so this could be possible in certain relationships right in the case that parents are trying to give us as much as possible and we are trying to take as much as possible but after some time they will also give up isn't it your friend will also give up so this is not sustainable it is also not mutually fulfilling the third option is give and give economics so i am able to see that my needs for physical facilities are limited i can produce more than what i require and i feel like sharing with you you also are able to see that your needs are limited in terms of physical facilities and you are able to produce more than what you require and you are able to share with me in that process both are getting prosperous both are getting healthy both are fulfilling relationship and the relationship grows and it expands from two individuals to many individuals and the whole society becomes prosperous seldom we are talking about this give and give economics most of the time what we are teaching the goal of economics is maximization of profit you have to maximize your profit in fact if you see what is profit so it is selling price minus purchase price or manufacturing price whatever you say right manufacturing cost so one way of looking at economics would be to enlarge this gap so my selling price should be much more than my cost but today industries are not satisfied with this they say that okay the profit is there but what is the rate of growth of profit is it positive or negative it's not only that delta difference is important that delta should increase so your dy at dx has to be positive the rate of increase of profit should be there it should be positive then another person comes and says that okay that is good that is taken care of now how about d2y by dx square how can we even add to the rate of growth of profit so the rate of rate of growth of profit has to be positive and so on this kind of economics we are trying to focus and that process your profit becomes my loss my profit becomes your loss because we are trying to exploit each other are you able to see this any question is there you can raise your hand are you able to see this the way we are trying to maximize profit and we are also trying to maximize the rate of growth of profit 
Bhaiya, I uh, like to have one sharing here. Like, if you see with our childhood days, the whole in in my own village, we just had two cycles where all my your age voice age... is not very clear, Didi. Something got uh, like I could not listen to it completely. Yeah. Just is it clear now, Bhaiya? Ha, you can remove your your phone. Then yeah, yeah, I removed it. I removed it. I just want to do one sharing in my age group. Uh, when I was in a kindergarten that time, the whole village, the whole village, uh, at least uh, a group of fifty family, we do had only two cycles to learn cycle, the whole uh, fifty group. But then now each and every single kid or their parents want to have their own cycles for their kids to learn. At least from my sisters to sisters to sisters, we used to have a same cycle to learn. But now, even if we give the cycle, they feel disrespect. Or if they take also, they feel disrespect. These kind of things are still there now. Now it has been started growing to look the things in different way. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that sharing is coming down. The feeling of sharing uh, is not there, and even now we are trying to look at it in a different way. Yeah. Even the acceptance is also coming down. Like yes, when yes. they want to give, also they are not ready to take. That kind of acceptance is also coming down. One thing to be looked into is whether we were sharing earlier with uh, like it was our choice or it was by force. If uh, if it was by force, then we try to come out of that situation. If it was by choice, then we like to sustain. So it may be the case that we were using only two cycles in a set of fifty students, but that was by force. That was not by choice. Because we did not have those many resources. Now that we have resources, we are trying to use our own cycles. But here again, the third possibility is that we have now enough, but we are now investing in not investing in cycles. We are investing in fulfilling others. That is another possibility that we have to take care of. Ji. Okay. Ji, boy. Ji. Nice, Didi. Ah, pranam, boy. Ji, pranam, pranam. Uh, my curiosity is related to uh, this statement that your profit is my loss. Uh, the question is, uh, how do we visualize it? Particularly in a case where the person who is uh, a loser uh, is not basically uh, any intended one, uh, but it is in general. And I think most of the financial frauds and uh, such problems happen uh, precisely for this reason that uh, we don't think that someone, a particular individual is losing because of my financial engagement. And therefore, uh, there is no feeling that, okay, I am harming someone because uh, I'm unable to visualize the face who is going to lose. And that's the reason I think uh, where uh, we find this proposition uh, very abstract that your profit is my loss or my profit is your loss, how to visualize it? Because ultimately it's a matter of living, uh, verifying through our experience. So uh, how do you respond to this, sir? Yeah, so that right understanding is missing. That's why we are having financial frauds. We are having shell companies. We are beguiling the people in the society by fake uh, uh, ideas and uh, this you know, money-making tricks. Hmm. So the right understanding and the feeling of prosperity is missing. And that's how we either offer such things or we get into these traps also. Hmm. Here also people are trying to get as much as money as possible uh, in a very short time period. And that's yeah. how they get in dangled. They, like the lottery business, you know, or so mm. many scams coming up almost every month, and people are getting yeah. trapped into it. Why? So, those who are trapping are also not having the feeling of prosperity, those who are getting trapped, they are also not having the feeling of prosperity. They are also trying to make maximum money in a very limited time, and that's how they are getting trapped because they are thinking mm. that going this way, I will not have to work, I will not have to labor, and just money will come my uh, way the way I am aspiring for it, and that's what right. that's how they are getting trapped. See? Hmm. Yes, thank you. Nice, nice, Bia. Similarly, we have to see that 
storage is required because you may not be able to produce every time like when you are producing food grains also in seasons in certain crops grow so we harvested wheat in the previous month and now we will consume wheat for the whole year so we have to store wheat similarly we have to store other food items we have to store even uh, money for our future needs for our old age so we are working today after some time we will not be able to work to this extent but we have to fulfill the needs of the body so we store for the future also so storage is an essential dimension of society but what is to be stored how much to be stored when does this storing becomes accumulation or hoarding that limit has to be clear so when i am able to understand right utilization then only i can make out how much do i need to store what will be the limit that i can make out in fact an essential homework from here is that are we able to make out how much money i need to ensure to store for my rest of life if that is not clear we may run into accumulation we may run into hoarding isn't it so storage is a natural program we do store but the problem arises when i am not able to distinguish in storage and accumulation and then this kind of dichotomy is there in my life so the wrong assumption is that this accumulation of wealth is a source of happiness every day we have a list of billionaires who is the topper and who is the loser in that list somebody becomes the third ranker one day after 6 months he becomes out of that race so people are caught up in that race and accumulation of wealth is considered to be the source of happiness and that's how we can see this kind of obsession in the society obsession for consumption profit sensual pleasure because our students are also getting wrong notion so economics doesn't have to talk about accumulation of wealth and doesn't have to term it as source of happiness it has to talk about right utilization the right utilization is never talked about in the current day society in economics and that's how we have to take care of this similarly we are still not talking about preservation of the rest of nature we assume that nature is for our consumption the river is for my consumption the soil is for my consumption the air water is for my consumption the plants are for my consumption the animals are for my consumption the way we have been exploiting the rest of nature is pathetic so when we observe we are able to see that our survival is dependent on the other three orders on the animal order bio order physical order and unless i am able to fulfill these orders my own survival is at risk so the wrong assumption here is that the struggle for survival and only the fittest can survive so what we have to do we have to dominate and exploit the nature now this kind of false notion is guiding our economics you can see this so that's how we are not able to have sustainable mode of development now today we have started talking about circular economy the point from where particular resource started it has to go to that same point but it has only become a kind of talk and you know, it has not come it is not coming into practice because people are not able to distinguish between the need and the greed they are not able to distinguish between the need of the self and need of the body and that's how even though we talk about circular economy it is not coming into practice so we have to understand the harmony in the nature clearly then only we can have a sustainable program so we really have to explain verify into this now when you look at the nature we can see that there are four orders of nature physical order bio order animal order and human order and these other three orders are enriching us fulfilling us but we are not fulfilling them because we are not having right understanding we are also not fulfilling the human beings we are not fulfilling the rest three orders of nature also but we do have natural acceptance for this and once we are able to see so once we are able to understand this harmony in the nature we can be much more fulfilling in the last keynote lecture we saw how people are working also some of us are working for fulfilling the nature one man planting lakhs of trees one man making nests for lakhs of birds one man taking care of lakhs of animals one person taking you know making the river which has got dried up converting back into a river so this kind of potential is there in us only that we have to be aware and it has to come through our courses in academics if the economics is being taught meaningfully effectively then our children have to get motivated to work in that direction how to plant trees how to do afforestation how to <clears throat> enrich the soil how to enrich the plants and and animals this kind of thought has to be there 
we have to see whether we are able to motivate our students in this direction or not now once we are once we are able to understand the harmony in the nature we get a vision for universal human order so we can see that these four orders are there physical order bio order animal order and human order and we are here as a human order and this is my development right and my role is to fulfill the rest of nature so in the nature we can see there are two kinds of units material and consciousness which are submerged in space space being unlimited and no activity so this vision has to be ensured in economics unless this vision is there like in every course we have to have some vision no in every program in every institution we have to have some vision so this is the vision for human economics this has to be fulfilled so it said that economics is the science of fulfillment of needs of the human being right for physical facility fulfilling the universal human order ensuring the universal human order generation by generation this kind of vision has to be laid down in economics isn't it are you able to see this that this kind of vision is required in economics and respond the chat box so the conclusion is that there is a need to redefine the theories and assumptions in economics we need to distinguish between what i am what i really want to be currently the theories and the principles and the formulations talk about what people are what how they are living seldom we are talk about we are able to talk about what we really want to be our natural acceptance so most of the theories relate to what i am while the emphasis has to be on what i really want to be then only our courses can be meaningful how they can be fulfilling so then only economics can be humane ensuring the well being of all that is prosperity of the human being and preservation of the rest of nature and that has to be done sustainably <clears throat> so to sum it all economics is meant for well being of all and the goal of human economics is to fulfill the need for physical facilities of human being ensuring universal human order generation after generation so this is all that i have to share from my side good evening sir namaste, namaste. Uh, sir i have a question as a uh, self i need to change i need to go for the natural acceptance but every time i who are individual they are driven driven by some system suppose if i am going to school it is driven by school system college college system company company system for example we want to go with the natural acceptance of this bio order animal order and physical order books suppose you are taking a book we have four kids or two kids in the home every time seven standard i have to buy a new book eight standard i have to new book but when we are studying we used to take the books from the uh, cousin brother or neighbors everything so yeah, yeah. where comes this uh, bio order the system has to plan right because we are ready to reuse regift everything but the system is not allowing schools are not allowing yeah. How so is, yeah yeah nice nice question so basically presently we are a part of the system so few things we can observe in the same system we may have multiple choices so the school that we are opting for the children you know that is our choice so maybe we can look for alternative schools also where this kind of scenario is not there One, no second. in our vicinity there is no such schools fine fine i'm just saying that if these options are there we can try to use those options yes. second thing we can also go and talk to the management in the school and try to have such workshops such content shared with the management and the teachers so that they also develop right understanding in fact they are also suffering because of the system yes sir but what what they i am are trying to say our children are going to go to schools mm -hmm. when we value the bio order definitely every when we start uh, telling the student this has to be given to the next class definitely they will take care of the books as well as they know the responsibility of the bio order yeah so, so yes so the, kind of so individual cannot change but a system can change it easily if a school authority says this book has to be transferred to the next class so keep it uh, safe definitely the individual will take care of belongings this can be passed so when it is adopted for more than a year definitely every individual will take care of all the belongings so can have a sustained uh, environment 
Yes. So this can be tried. This can be worked upon. So maybe you can start from some school, but you will see ultimately it boils down to right understanding. So yes. we have to work for the right understanding. Otherwise, giving these prescriptions has a very limited effect. So it's not, sir, this can be also a choice to the children. I'm not uh, saying it, it has to be followed. You give a choice to the individual. So uh, if it is a CBSE school or state board school, that government has to come with the policies. So policies are adopted by the individual, not individual is giving a policy. See, here again, I th I think there's some limitation of time, but yes. we are choosing the government. We are electing yes. the government. We are making the system. The system yes. is not outside us. We ourselves are a part of the system. So maybe yes, you are a faculty in some college, isn't mm. it? So you can work on the system of that college. Yes, definitely. So we have to start from there. See, prescribing something for some other institution may be difficult, but accepting at one's personal level and trying to work for this kind of system around us could be quite mm. possible. So yeah. in your institution, you can see how you know, the students can be sharing their books, their belongings, how we can make much more utilization of the workspace available. Mm. Not only in the school or college, how we can also include people from the society. Yeah, definitely. They can, take, they can utilize these facilities. Yes. Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Nice, nice, Didi. Nice, thank so, you. Okay, okay. Just about yeah. this reuse was there. So what I do is our students, I mean, an engineering college and students submit their lab journals. And uh, that uh, plastic goes uh, wasted. So what I do is, uh, since I have some journals of uh, student, past students and I have been teaching since so many years. So what I do is only for past three years, we are required to keep journals as per NBA guidelines. So that I keep and for senior students journals, I just give away them free to all the students who want those plastic folders from me. So, so many students are coming. They are saving just 10 rupees, 15 rupees, but I'm distributing them free because reduce, re recycle, uh, and uh, say these different things are there in environmental science. So I am actually practicing it. And students are also saving their money and I am just giving them away for a fee because I don't have to go and sell them to the shop. And junior students are plastic that are used by their seniors. So I am uh, actually practicing that after uh, attending this USG workshop. Thank you. Nice, nice, sir. <clears throat> ji, bhaiya, I think uh, it's time already, bhaiya. Ji, 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 please proceed. So thank you all for patient hearing.